Hey, what is going on guys and girls? In today's video, I'll be going over what exactly is AutoGPT. So AutoGPT is an open source project. Essentially, it allows you to transform your GPT-4 or your chat GPT into an autonomous GPT-4 application. You can run prompts and you can set up um, tasks for the AI to do without having to manually enter those prompts. And it's currently the number one repository on GitHub. So let's go ahead and do a deep dive into AutoGPT. We'll take a look at what exactly makes this AutoGPT different from ChatGPT. We'll also be taking a look at the features and the tasks that you can do with AutoGPT. If you head over to the repository on GitHub, you'd be able to see all of the most important information about AutoGPT. So it's an autonomous GPT-4 experiment. Some of the unique features of AutoGPT are the ability to access the internet for searches and information gathering. So you can actually access live information using this um, AutoGPT. It also has long-term and short-term memory management. So that means it'll be able to access or hold information for longer, which allows you to be able to then um, do more complex tasks. It also uses GPT-4 instances for text generation, access to popular websites and platforms. So again, you can access the internet to get more live information. And it has some file storage and summarization with GPT-3.5. So that's a summary of AutoGPT. Now let's talk about what makes AutoGPT different from ChatGPT or just using the regular GPT-4 um, APIs. If you would like to use the GPT-4 model, you would have to use it on the ChatGPT interface and you would have to run it prompt by prompt. So we can't really set up a sequence of prompts or tasks for um, this model to follow. So for instance, if we wanted to run a prompt on GPT-4, we would have to run it one by one. So in this example, I've asked it to create a new online challenge based on the holiday. And as you can see here, it's giving me that output. Now, the main difference between ChatGPT and AutoGPT is that you're able to autonomously or automatically add specific tasks or specific um, instructions for the AI to follow. So I can have a series of tasks um, that's related to this specific outcome and the AI will follow it until the objectives are completed. So for instance, if you take a look at the demo available on the GitHub repository, we can see how AutoGPT works. The first thing that you need to do is name your AI. So you'd like to name your AI um, depending on the type of outcome in which you're trying to get from the AI chat box. So for example, if you are trying to use the AI to create a business plan, you can call it an entrepreneur GPT. You can call it a chef GPT if you're looking uh, to create recipes using this AI chat box. Or if you're looking to create jokes, you can call it a joke GPT. If you're looking for a writer, you can call it a writer GPT, just depending again on the type of outcome that you have for that chat box. The second thing that you need to do is describe your AI's role. So next you need to describe what exactly the AI will be doing. So for this example, which is Chef GPT, um, this is an AI designed to autonomously develop and run businesses with the sole goal of increasing your net worth. And Chef GPT is an AI designed to browse the web to discover the next upcoming events and invent a unique and original recipe that is suited for that event. So you want to be very descriptive with your AI role because this tells the AI what it needs to do. And the next thing that you need to do is enter up to five goals for your AI. So this is where you'd enter the goals or the tasks that the AIs need to follow to complete the overall objective. So in this instance, we have three goals. The first is to invent an original and out of the box recipe to suit a current event such as Easter, save the resulting recipe, and then shut down upon achieving your goal. And once you have your goals, you'll then be able to run this auto GPT. And you can actually see the thoughts, the reasoning, and how the AI is able to get to its objective. So this is where it's a little bit different compared to ChatGPT, right? You're able to see the reasoning. The AI is able to go out and search different places and then figure out if that is the best outcome or if that's, that's the best information for the outcome that it's trying to get at. When you're using ChatGPT, on, on the regular website, you accident an input and then it'll just give you an output based upon its information. But this is where sort of we see self-learning. We see the AI being able to critically think, um, able to do much more research compared to ChatGPT. And if we pause for a second here, we can also see that the AI is going through specific websites. It's going on newer websites. It's trying to find uh, and browse places that it can find the best suited information for this objective. And again, that's another major difference with AutoGPT compared to ChatGPT, because we all know ChatGPT is not really able to do research on more up-to-date information, and it doesn't necessarily search the live web. So again, um, you're able to see the thought process here. We're able to see how 
this um, AI chat box is able to get to its objective. And once it's finished, then you'll be able to see what the agent was created. So the agent, again, would just be um, the AI. So it the first response was Earth Day quinoa salad ingredients. Da, da, da. So it was able to create a recipe based upon a holiday, which was the objective. And then it has some instructions on how you can go ahead and create that recipe. So this is really cool because it allows you to go a little bit deeper in terms of using these chat boxes. You're not just um, entering an input and then getting an output based upon its preconceived information that's already been trained on. We see that the AI is able to reason, it's able to critically think, and it's able to give you more nuanced responses based upon your inputs. And the main difference here as well is also that you have different objectives that you can give the AI. So you can have a list of things that the AI needs to follow in order to get to its objective. So again, that allows you to really customize your own AI chat box in the way that you would like it to do its research to find or to come to a conclusion. If you're using ChatGPT, again, you don't really have those type of customization options. Of course, you can add in prompts with multiple steps, but again, um, some things that are different is that you don't really have access to live data or the ability to um, go on specific websites and then the ability to add multiple different goals. So this is just one example. If we head over to Twitter, there's a couple other really good examples of the auto GPT in use. So here we have a research GPT. So the research GPT is an agent designed to autonomously create market research for a given idea. So the goals are to do market research for waterproof shoes, to get the top five competitors and list their pros and cons, include the price for each and save the analysis somewhere. Once done, terminate. So a very simple objective, but you can see it's very useful because you can get market research on a specific um, idea or a specific product. And again, the main difference here is that you're able to get live information. So the first thing that it did is that it went straight to Google to find the top five waterproof shoes reviews. Once it found the links, it created questions for itself, like what are the pros and cons of each shoe? What are the pros and cons of each of the top waterproof shoes? Top five waterproof shoes for men and so on. So as we can see here, again, it's going through its thought process. It went straight to Google and it was able to find that information. So let's go ahead and open this up. Next up, it continued to analyze the various sites with a combination of Googling, updating its queries until it was happy with the results. Here's an example of when it thought critically. It knew that some of the reviews could be biased to fake, so it had to validate the reviewer. Okay, so the research GPT thoughts, the website content summary is not detailed enough for me to be able to find the waterproof shoes. Reasoning, I did not get sufficient information from the first website to proceed with my analysis. So then it has a plan and it has some criticism. So again, we see here the ability to um, critically think and the ability to reason um, is being shown within auto GPT, which is very, very cool. So let's go ahead and continue here. It even spawned out its own sub agent to carry out a task of analyzing the websites. So it actually went ahead and created a new agent to go do some other task, which is pretty darn cool if you think about it. So again, we can see the proof here. So if you want to go ahead and take a look at this, I'll leave a link for this um, Twitter feed below. The results, a pretty detailed report of the top five waterproof shoe companies with their pros, their cons, and a nice conclusion summarizing the report. And it only took about eight minutes at a, at a cost of 10 cents. This was a pretty basic example too, entirely unoptimized. So again, we get a comparator analysis report of the waterproof shoes. Introduction, we get Columbia, pros, cons, Salomon, pros and cons, Merrill, pros and cons, Keen, pros and cons, North Face, and so on, and a nice conclusion here. So this is pretty cool because, again, the biggest limitation with ChatGPT right now is its inability to gather live data. So you have that ability included in AutoGPT. And not only can you gather live data, you can do a lot more things in terms of using this AutoGPT. You can give it a lot more different tasks that you can't give to um, ChatGPT. So as you can see there, those are two pretty cool examples of how you can use AutoGPT. I'm sure that there'll be a lot of different use cases and a lot of different new examples that will be coming out as this tool becomes popular and as people figure out the real capabilities of this tool. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope that it was useful. I hope that you guys um, learned something new. I will be doing some future videos of me setting up AutoGPT and I'll also be going through some live examples so that we can really figure out the capability of this new tool. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.